Um, thank you and welcome everyone to the Special Governance and Priority Committee meeting on Thursday, April 12th. Um, we have in front of us uh, an agenda, strangely an unamended one. Um, but are, th are the things you're supposed to add to this, folks? Mr. Woodland. Okay, and Councillor Coleman is set later tonight? Later. Thank you. Uh, in which case, I would look so forward to a motion to approve motion. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The first item is um, Council and Orientation, Governance, item number one, Governance Principles. Ms. Watson, Watson Advisors. Your Worship, uh, I have the briefest of PowerPoint presentations. Uh, today's uh, uh, focus is going to be on two reports that have been provided in your package. We have the dis Governance Discussion Summary Report from Elizabeth Watson. We're going to focus on the recommendations that are outlined in Appendix A at the back of the report, and I've got those on a slide to show as we go along. As well, the staff have got a table, and we're just going to document all the su uh, suggested actions that flow out of that list. The second um, exercise would be to go through the uh, governance model recommendations that staff prepared in January, and that's the large yellow table. Again, I've got that on a slide so we can work through that. Um, I just wanted to sort of frame the exercise today. It, this, is, this is sort of how staff had conceptualized working through all this stuff. Um, the objectives of today's meeting would be to do one of four things. Identify recommendations for implementation. Uh, refer recommendations to a governance committee. We don't know what that governance committee is at this point. The default is Governance and Priorities Committee. A suggestion in Elizabeth Watson's report was a standing committee of council that would be focused on governance. So that might be one of the things we focus on early on. Uh, refer recommendations to staff for further work and bringing back to council for approval. And to identify recommendations for further consultation. So if we could try to sort of keep those four um, action uh, suggestions in mind as we work through this, uh, that might produce a useful way to sort of go at all these recommendations. Um, that's it for the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Other than the next, thing I'll, the next thing I'll do is pull up Elizabeth Watson's okay. recommendations okay. and start there unless council has an alternative approach to suggest. So as you recall, Elizabeth took us through a number of uh, items and has documented the issues she discussed with us back in January or February in the report that's been provided to you. I wasn't going to revisit that report in any detail, but rather uh, work through the recommendations that are contained on page 17 of the document you have. And those are also showing up on the screen at this point. I may have to bounce back and forth just because I can just sort of make that out. The first group of four recommendations relate to roles and responsibilities. Four particular recommendations were made. Um, does council wish me to read these out uh, for everybody's benefit or happy to do that? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, the four recommendations contained under roles and responsibilities are first, to develop a written document that provides guidance for individual counselors on their individual roles and responsibilities, including a process to respond to citizen complaints or inquiries, and appropriate conduct in response to lobbying efforts. Uh, this is touched on in a couple of places, but sort of relates to rules of engagement or code of conduct. Uh, secondly, review the mandate of committees to ensure they're supporting the strategic priorities of council restructure committees as required and provide comprehensive terms of reference for each committee. That's touched in a, on in a bit more detail in the staff recommendations, the second part of the uh, discussion that we're proposing today. Uh, thirdly, to articulate more fully the responsibilities of the mayor, including guidance on managing the work of council, working with staff, and communicating with councillors. So something beyond the generalized mandate that's given to you through the community charter and the types of things we've outlined in the council uh, bylaw. And fourth, uh, 
to establish written policy outlining the process and considerations in appointing councillors to internal and external bodies. So some guidelines in relation to the appointment process and how that proceeds. There's also, uh, that issue is also touched on in the uh, staff recommendations report that I've talked about later in, uh, in today's discussion. So those were the four items under roles and responsibilities that Elizabeth Watson uh, pulled together from the discussion with council. And uh, we're seeking some direction on those from council. I was planning to sort of do it in the sections as she's outlined them, uh, rather than go through the whole document and then start from the top again. So. Um, I'm, I'm a little, I'm not sure that the item two, the mandate of committees to ensure they are supporting the strategic priorities of council. Um, I, I, I read with interest, I think you circulated something yeah. a couple of days ago with some feedback from uh, committees and, and I mean they have, obviously they want to be involved in the uh, process of developing policy, but I, I, I think uh, I, I think they have to be, this to me sounds as if they're discussions are being very highly dictated by our strategic uh, strategic objectives and and one of the purposes of committees it seems to me is to be uh, bringing forward ideas that they think are important and I, I think that was expressed in some of the, uh, the discussion although I just have the minutes but uh, uh, so I'm, I'm not I'm, I, I in terms of I guess it depends what you mean by strategic priorities. If you mean it's to make the city a better place to live, yeah. I mean, that's, but normally our strategic priorities would be more focused and if the intent is that we use them to focus the work of the committees, um, then I'm not sure that we're, uh, that's the objective we want to achieve. As you say, we were discussing this in the sense of who has control of council's agenda? Is it council or is it some other group? Um, part of what the response from the committee was, um, keep us busy, i.e. give us what our council's priorities and make sure that that's happening. It's a good suggestion how to do that. If ideas do come up that you don't like, then council, you have a responsibility to say no. Um, and that is ultimately, I think, is more of a political challenge than a governance issue. Uh, and you know, just us having that ability to say, actually we don't want to work on this we don't think it is a priority so thank you citizens we've heard from you uh, so i just wanted to provide that, that uh, discussion that we had there with that sense which is so but how do you capture both of that within number two and perhaps the way to say it is you can keep number two but you recognize that within the t that we make sure that we have an explicit part within the terms of the committees that say you know committees may bring issues to attention of council uh, to be and, and, and so we give them the so I mean this is the higher level document that says this is what we want committees to do but within the terms of reference that we can allow them to, to bring stuff forward and council has to take responsibility and say sorry we don't feel like working on we're happy with the way dogs and leash are working and we just don't want to do any more work right now. Thank you, Councilor Eisen. Uh, in general terms, I support all four of these recommendations. I wonder if Mr. Woodland could elaborate on what um, what will be the fate of the very detailed work that him and other staff did on the various, the more specific governance reforms. Some of which I support, some which I don't. But before you go there, so concentrate on number two, and then come back to that question. Just given that that's the discussion right now, does anybody have any comments on, on item number two? Thank you, Shelley. Uh, just oh, reading no, it without, question, ben. Yeah. without going too into detail, but it says that it is to say, it says just review the mandate mm -hmm. of committees. It's not, you know, I, I don't know, I think that review keeps it quite loose. It's not binding, it's not, and we, we review the mandate and council can do that. So I don't, I don't know whether we have to go about messing with it because re just re concept of reviewing isn't that specific. So perhaps when we get into the yellow sheets, I think there's a more specific piece that says they can't bring stuff forward that we can deal with that specific issue at that time. Mr. Woodland? And I think Councillor Young touched on it. 
touched on, on the heart of the matter. It's, it's in, in the staff's viewpoint, it's shall the committees work on the priorities and the mandate that council defines, or are you allowing them to open the door and bring ideas that are not on your priority list, not on your strategic objective list, and put those onto your agenda because of their role as uh, lay committees. So uh, that, that's the heart of the matter, and, and we do touch on that in the staff recommendations. The staff's uh, opinion is we, we've got a full plate dealing with all the issues that council puts on our agenda. We've got very little capacity to deal with new things that the committee uh, uh, brings up. And uh, further, a question of whether you want to control, be the master of your own agenda, or whether you want your agenda to be also driven by uh, the advisory committee. So that's sort of the, the philosophical question there that, that I think Councillor Young was touching on. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Councillor. Oh, oh, sorry. So, uh, and Chris. Well, I think there's a difference between um, an advisory committee embarking on work mm -hmm. and an advisory committee asking council if the council would consider mandating them to do that. And I, I think okay. the door that I would like to keep open is that they can communicate an issue uh -huh. that w may not be on our radar, that needs to be and that council would be able to say. Yes, no, but at least it would it would get to this table rather than it being buried. So that's what I would be trying to capture in that is that you can't do go and just do the work and expect the staff resource. But if you have an issue that you think is there's an issue of timeliness, for example, that it could be formally brought to the attention of council for consideration about whether or not there's resources that would be chosen to be deployed. Is that a possibility? And I guess we always have, which is a practical thing, we always have the opportunity say, okay, thank you, refer to the next strategic planning, yep. what goes on, what comes off, all of those mm -hmm. issues does council have. But at least it would be made known to council table. Um, and that's, that's roughly the current rules that are in place right now. And this doesn't change that necessarily? Uh, I guess the, the question we ask of you is, are you happy with that? Do you want to change it one way or the other? Well, I think Jeff and Pam have identified the problem and it's actually not the um, wish of an advisory committee to investigate an area that may not have been directed to them but it's then the more uh, energetic of those people perhaps wandering into a staff office and saying I need this I need that and it's 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 so I don't wish to constrain our advisory committee's capacity to go out and find interesting areas. Mm -hmm. I don't want them directing staff. But mm -hmm. If they want to do that, then they come back and yeah. ask us. Yeah. So and it's how we make this? that play. Um, I, I share Jeff's concern because what happens is we get frustrated, as they do, and we say, we're going to constrain you, so you can only look at what we've told you. So it's, it's that interplay, and I agree with Pam. I, I don't want to constrain their ability to look at other options and, and other issues, but I think they have to come back and ask council for um, some validation of that, and should staff resources be put to it or not? And we have to have the, the strength to say, interesting area, go off and look at it yourself, or yes, we think it does fit in. So it, it's... Uh, Lisa, and then Shelley. I would, based on what Shelley said, that all it asks is a review, and I, I would actually suggest striking number two, because it seems to me from the document that we have in front of us that staff has prepared that a review in some ways has already been done. So if we strike two and then deal with the specific recommendations as to the new rules of the committees, whether or not we feel like they're accurate or not as reflected in the staff report, I think that we're gonna do the same thing twice. Yeah. And so I would just move one through, one, three, and four and strike two from this, recognizing that it's, it's literally here before us in this next document. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Okay. That takes care of the first box. Vision and strategy box. Uh, just one question for council. How do you wish to work through these things? So, in Elizabeth Watson's report, she had suggested a governance subcommittee, or does council wish to bring it back to the governance priorities committee? And then uh, one or the other will sort of drive the, the process from there. It's the job of governance. I think we have to deal with it in uh, workshop format for GPC. If we try send it to a 
a governance committee. <laughs> if we'll never get it right, it'll come back to GPC yeah, anyway. We'll <laughs> down, yeah. Okay, and then uh, my last question on these three, are you comfortable then just referring them to staff for work to be brought back to governance and priorities committee? Is there a timeline on that? Is there a timeline on that? Uh, what I'll have to do is take all of this stuff away, figure out what makes sense in terms of groupings of things, and then figure out a work plan, and then I'm going to have to come back to council as well. So sure. Um, or GPC. On item one, bullet one, uh, I do intend to propose in our priority setting that we examine the possibility of having an ombuds committee with uh, as a complaint resolution mechanism. So. Maybe if Mr. Woodland could hold off till we've had that discussion in our priority setting meeting. I don't know. I don't suggest sure that. Mr. Woodland's not going to get around to that in the next yeah, week or two. Ten days. Oh, so. well, actually, you'd be surprised. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now that you're laid up. You know, this isn't. This is consistent with the broader direction of council to improve customer service. Mm -hmm. So, uh, recently, um, customer service standards were introduced across the organization for the management group. Uh, those are progressing into the organization uh, more fully in terms of timeliness of response. We've developed a public complaint policy that talks about when a, when a member of the public complains about a certain issue, how is that dealt with that draft policy is moving forward to the director's group for consideration. So there's work underway. It doesn't preclude uh, something uh, like um, uh, Councillor Isaac is suggesting, uh, but certainly routine types of service complaints wouldn't be the purview of an ombudsperson's committee. I mean, that's, that's when you get serious allegations about um, people being treated unfairly or improperly or outside of the established bylaws and procedures of the city. So. Yeah, it enables our question of whether what is council's job and role isn't that supposed to be part of it. They'll question whether we have liaisons. Item is vision and strategy. It's in the center of the screen there. Uh, three recommendations uh, recommendations were proposed. Uh, there's this recommendation to continue the practice of annual strategic planning. Uh, right now, we're just about poised to embark on a strategic planning and priority setting exercise with council. I believe that commences on the 24th of April. Uh, sessions also scheduled on the 30th of April and the 22nd of May. Uh, that would set the agenda for the council for the coming three years. Uh, that it would bleed over into the first year of the next council. Uh, second recommendation is to plan council's agendas for the upcoming year around items that advance the strategic plan and other required council responsibilities. So I think this is to develop more of a roadmap as to what council should expect in the fall, in the winter, in the spring, in terms of routine activities and produce that for council so they have an understanding of what to expect. February is budget month. Um, June is annual reporting month. Um, you'd want to schedule your city manager uh, reviews at some point. You've got your performance uh, uh, measurement uh, reporting at quarterly periods. So it's a, an opportunity to produce that roadmap for council to make sure they understand when those things come forward uh, and what the type of reporting would be. Uh, the third one is to establish key performance measures for strategic plan initiatives and have staff report regularly on progress against those measures. That has been implemented. Whether it's fulsome enough for you, we don't know. Uh, do you want more information? Do you want less information? Do you want a different type of reporting? That's all part of this process. So um, I believe as, as, uh, as soon as possibly next week or the week after, uh, Gail will be providing a quarterly progress report on the top 20 um, uh, strategic initiatives of the city. So. On the 19th, April 19th. Um, I had a meeting, uh, on, on recommendation number five, I had a meeting with Brenda Warner this morning and with her worked out a motion that I'm going to be bringing as a late item to GPC on the 19th to create a three-year budgeting cycle. And so maybe if, I'll just throw this out as an idea to rather than continue the practice of annual strategic planning, to create uh, pro a three-year strategic planning process process tied to a three-year budgeting cycle or if we don't if we're not sure about budgeting cycle because we haven't voted on it yet just create a three-year st strategic planning process 
because that sets our priorities for the term. And I think that that's kind of what we do anyways. Yeah. So I, yeah, recommendation five confused me as it reads. Yeah. Thank you, Councilor Isaac. Uh, first of all, I support the recommendation we'll be looking at next week, but I wonder if it would be advisable just to table item five until we've had that discussion rather than sort of deciding that particular issue right in this context. I think for me, one of the things we generally had the experience of last term, uh, we did the experience of doing, here's our top priorities, here's now, here's next, here's sometime in the future. Um, and once those were set, then council had an opportunity to say, okay, my own personal pet might be within the next, which means I need to get it now done to get it in, right? Um, and part of that is to say, have quarterly updates, to say, how are we doing on the ones that allow us to do that? So. For me, the, for, there's no magic around the word annual strategic planning. Uh, I think what I really want to say is council shall have a strategic plan. Council shall have quarterly updates to review that strategic plan and modify as appropriate. And, and, and whether, you, whether that's in a three-year budget cycle or whatever, I mean, I, I mean I'm with you. I mean, the experience is you're not going to get all your strategic pr priorities done in one year, right? Um, so you could easily say, this is the term strategic priorities. And we did do the now, next, and never, so, uh, but with the quarterly update. So perhaps what we could do is keep five uh, and say, you know, continue the practice of strategic, strategic planning. planning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then we're going to dig into the mechanics of that. Mm -hmm. uh, you now, if we want to, we can include strategic planning, including net quarterly updates and modifications type stuff. Okay. Okay. I should just strike annual at this time, and but generally everybody else is, is happy with um, five, six, and seven. I know the devil is going to be in the details of those, but uh, Lisa. One more question. Maybe this is obvious, and maybe it's not. But I wonder if we need to. I mean, maybe it's obvious that the strategic planning is tied inextricably to the budget. But if it, if it's not obvious, I think it's worth adding because we can have all the plans in the world, but it needs to be tied to some reality. Well. Yes. Um, part of what we do during our review is, is we did sometimes, it's like sometimes you say, for example, harm reduction is very important to us as a strategic priority. But uh, that, is an advo that's, that is advocacy as opposed to actually paying for it. So those discussions happen. It's, it's almost like the budget should reflect the strategic priority. Um, so it's, again, maybe it is within strategic planning, there's an understanding that. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Is it implicit that we also need strategic budgeting? So can we continue Let's make sure that that's part of the stuff that falls down under strategic planning. Strategic planning includes you know, tying the, developing the strategic plan, tying the budget resources over three years to it, uh, providing for reviews, those sort of things. Well, I think that you identified the, the appropriate response earlier. Um, I don't know that it needs to be quarterly updating, but I think you would say continue the practice of strategic planning, including regular updates. And some will be fiscal and some won't be budgetary. And some may be, this is where we are on the advocacy side of things. But I, I do think you need that touch base back. And it doesn't, it doesn't say that there. It, if we just say strategic planning, we do it once in the first year and we're good for three years. I don't, I don't think that's anybody's concept on it. Yeah, I think in, in this context, um, the suggestion is once per term, you do a fulsome strategic priority strategic planning exercise where you revisit the thing and you check in and say, yeah, those mission is good, the values are good, but hey, we want to reorganize these priorities, we want to reorganize these objectives. So the, the suggestion is you do that once per term, and then you do all the regular things that, that would follow out of that. So you would have your quarterly updates as things move off the priorities list, something else moves on, and you have a dialogue with council over the, over the term of the three years about that whole process, because it's always changing, it's always the lists are being completed and new things move up the list and it's not a um, it's not a linear process, it's, it's an linear process. So I think it's consistent with, with what I'm hearing around the table, which is has to be tied to budgeting, um, it isn't static, it needs to be revisited, you need to know where things stand, and you need to adjust maybe uh, once a year if new things present as urgent priorities. 
So we would understand that as all part of a, a three-year process, all of those continual discussions about priorities and reporting and performance measurement and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so continue the practice of strategic planning. Councilor Isaac? When we adopt 567 as amended? Competent leadership. Education program for counselors. The topic should include relevant aspects of city operations together with issues that are relevant to the city's strategic plan, like demographics, development, city financing, sustainability, etc. So uh, we embarked on a improved uh, counselor orientation program with this particular term of council. Um, we need to know what else you would like to have as part of that program. Uh, one of the items I identified in the next bullet relates to understanding better the city's financial environment and understanding better media relations and things like that. So the next uh, recommendation is provide specific training for counselors in financial literacy relevant to the city's financial environment and the media. Uh, the next one, ensure council implements a robust annual evaluation of the city manager. That's a, a, a typical uh, best practice recommendation. Again, one of those things that you'd probably put onto your uh, legislative agenda as one of your routine activities, but have a, a, a date or a time of the year when you do that. Uh, you would have next uh, ensure council plans for city managers su succession, both for emergencies and uh, permanent replacement, and that the city manager has management succession plans in place to uh, guide leadership in the organization through the departmental directors and other positions in the city. Uh, consider a mentorship program as part of the new counselor orientation. Uh, that blends better with uh, recommendations eight and nine. And uh, establish a council policy for orientation and education that outlines what's included in the program. So again, that touches on eight and nine. Uh, having council define better what it wants to get out of its orientation program uh, both on a, uh, a reminder basis for uh, uh, longer serving council members and to make sure new council members have a, a good understanding of the environment that they've uh, entered into. So I'll remind council that our city manager does provide quarterly reports as to uh, against the, the, the markers that we lay out for and those things do come forward. Uh, we're due for an annual get together and do it and uh, we'll have to set that up after we finish the strategic planning. So, so much these are all good and don't see a problem with any of these. That's right. Number nine doesn't read number properly. Number, number nine. It's an old being um, you need. I think it needs to be two different ones. I think you, you're suggesting media training and financial literacy training. And I think you need that, that doesn't scan properly. Yeah. Oh. yeah, you can actually put number eight, nine into eight. Topics include city operations, strategic plan. City financing, sustainability, you know, financial literacy, media, media training. Mm -hmm. yeah. It yeah, can just be awesome. added into eight. So maybe I'll just ask council a question here. There's a, a, a package of program improvements that we can do for the next orientation period, which will come in two and a half years. The other question I'd ask council is, what are you missing now? What things would you like to receive in terms of information or training uh, that you need in your current in your current roles. <laughs> Jeff first and Ben. What what exactly is the, the media media training? I, did I uh, uh, probably TV it, makeup? Yeah, <laughs> I mean I, a good example will be as we move towards webcasting. Mm -hmm. There's a host of things that you'll, you know, technical tips that you'll want to keep in mind in terms of uh, how you look, how you speak, how you interact at the table when you're being broadcast on uh, media to make sure that you're heard, that you're seen, uh, that others hear you and see you, and, and the debate is, uh, you know, respectful and all that sort of stuff. So we would plan to do some training in conjunction with the webcasting to make sure you uh, know sort of the do's and don'ts about uh, 
uh, what to wear. So <laughs> what you, but, but no, it's, it, you know, you don't. Do we get hair and makeup? You don't wear polka dots yeah. or stripes. Or if you wear, or if you wear brown and you're sitting in, in front of the wood paneling, you won't be seen because you'll blend in. Other things would simply relate to, uh, you know, uh, understanding how the media uh, works, how uh, they're motivated, and how uh, you need to respond in terms of their approach to seeking information from you. So that's generally some sort of package of media. I'm, I'm not sure for the counselors who attended the LGLA, did they do a, a piece on mm -hmm. media relations? Yeah. And was that yeah. useful? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you want to talk about 11 now, or just stick to stick to the? Uh, uh, keep going, Jeff. Uh, just yeah. Uh, I'm not. Um, Quite sure about this one. Is this is it intended to look at the city manager management succession for the city manager job, or as well as for other other positions? The um, the issue being that it's uh, uh, well, selection of the city manager is one of the only personnel decisions that the council makes, and I'm not sure how that is going to mesh with this idea of succession planning. Obviously, you need emergency uh, succession. Uh, I'm not, I, I think it, I'm not sure whether it has to be clarified that uh, council may have its own views on management succession. I think, I think uh, in one instance, one is very much in your hands. You are the group that would be responsible for recruiting a city manager. <coughs> then there's the whole basis of what is the plan? What is the city manager's plan to uh, uh, replace directors, general managers, as they uh, come and go, uh, either on a planned basis, retirement, or an unplanned basis for other reasons, and uh, making sure that that plan satisfies the organizational needs for timely replacement of people consideration of internal and external candidates, you know, those types of things. I wonder if we added the word senior before management in the middle, um, but, and that the city manager has senior management succession plans in place, so it's clear that it's talking about staff other than the city manager. Mm -hmm. And that would respect council's purview over succession of the manager itself. Okay, I have a comment on that. Okay, I have a My secondary turn. point back to the eight and nine, which I think we could roll them into one. I'm hesitant of diluting the importance of financial literacy as maybe a core education function, maybe above and beyond the others. And so I wonder if we could do that by saying in eight, topics should include financial literacy and relevant aspects of city operations, rather than just throwing it in the laundry list to make it clear that that's sort of our first priority, maybe, for education. Lisa, Dindy. Yeah, I'm just wondering about the spirit of 12. I, I personally, I, I don't think we need that. I mean, we need mentors, but we can find them. We have mentors, we share offices. I just don't uh, create a mentorship program. Sounds like a burdensome, unnecessary thing to do when we can ask our colleagues for support and things. What's that? <laughs> like when Charlene showed us how to hole punch our pieces of paper and put them in the right place. That was, really that was that very was helpful. helpful. <laughs> I can't tell you she was my mentor. Was. <laughs> so I just, yeah, I would, <laughs> I'd say strike, strike 12 in the interest of not doing make work yeah. projects that aren't necessary in my opinion. I agree. So, okay, so, um, Lisa, Jeff and Lisa D. So oh, then, yeah, okay. Okay. and then Shelley. Uh, just on eight, if we provide an ongoing education program for counselors about relative to to topics of city operations, shouldn't we at the same time make that very available to the public? Because when it comes to elections and the process of public office, 
everyone's telling you, you got to do this, you got to do that, and then we have an election like we saw where we're talking about topics that aren't related to the strategic plan, and the people, the incumbents are saying, you know, you're, you can't address some of the issues. Like, I think there's an education component that we need to give out to the public, so their understanding of what it is we're doing, that, uh, because there's a whole basket of stuff the public throws at, and then so the new people that are running for office are going, and I'll do this, and I'll do that, and I'll do this, and the incumbents are not able to necessarily defend themselves. You know, it's a political discussion, so I think there needs to be some sort of, um, to the public, education of the public at some, as amongst that. Do you get what I'm saying? The public session. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking like, about that one. Yeah, like some sort of public outreach. Yeah, there's, and there are a mix of opportunities. Uh, the Local Government Leadership Academy is a newer opportunity that the new the elected officials can take advantage of. There's ongoing opportunities through the UBCM or the FCM for continuing education. But it, That's not are there need. specific topics that you would like to be educated on, and it would be in sort of a public manner, at a meeting of the council on financial management, for example. Another example, uh, that I had in my mind just a moment ago that I'd forgotten. Um, uh, the UDI was interested in presenting an opportunity to educate councils generally in the region on the mechanics of development, the pressures of development from their perspective. I think you're missing my point though. I'm talking about educating Joe Blow on Vining Street or Joe Blow on, I'm talking about your, whether it's through an ad in the paper or that we re put it in several times. These are council's strategic priorities and council will be fault like it's an education program for the general voting public. That they are well aware of what we're spending our time on rather than demanding us to stop everything and start this. Do you know, I, I just think that there's an educational component to the public that's not out there, right? And, and not just saying we have a strategic plan and we're following it doesn't necessarily, I think we need to spell it out a little bit more clearer somehow that this is what council will be focusing on in the next three years. But that's just, that, I don't have to discuss it. Well, um, two things I wanted to point out. A couple was I agree with you. It's, it's frustrating when, you know, we do all this work day after day from three years and then the election comes and people are Why trying to get to speed and saying, uh, why doesn't the city do this, this, that? And some of the people that are running are saying that as well. And we've said we've done that, and we've looked into that. It's not part of our, and we spend all our time at the camp defending. At the, defending. And we look defensive instead of being able to say, you know, this is what's been done, and being able to be positive about it. We look like we're being reactive to it. And so I think that would be uh, a positive step if we can teach people how we do the financing, how we, you know, how, what, what the strategic plan entailed. And, and we need to do it all through the three years, not just. Uh, when election time comes around. Um, I do find that uh, the media training was, was great when I had it nine years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it, and it's always a learning process. Every time I see, you know, do something on TV or radio, I think, darn, I sh should remember that I <laughs> sound bites, sound bites. <laughs> but <coughs> I think it's something that... Three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I think it is something that we need to constantly uh, have updates and be reminded. And, and you know, I think having orientations uh, each year on certain topics I think is important. Uh, the mentorship program, I agree, I think that should be taken out. Um, I just think if we're forced mentorship, it, it, it I think it, it wouldn't work and I think it, it, we need, as counselors have been on the table before, need to have our door open that if someone has a question, um, you know, that we, we share the information we have. But I don't think 12 needs to be there. Um, so uh, one of the things, when I look at number eight, it says provide an ongoing mm -hmm. education program for counselors. And part of what I'm concerned to touch on the wording is, it sort of implies that our staff will do that, as mm -hmm. opposed to, I mean, many of these things we may say, uh, well, Global Government Leadership Academy provides these, these, and these. So making sure that it's within the framework. So maybe it's more like provide an, an education framework for counselors. And, and counselors can help set up, where would I find helpful? So we don't have to recreate something. We don't have to, you know, we can use the economy of scales and, and get some to do that way. So I think all of, and some do have to be within our own purview. I mean, some are specific to the city, but media training, I mean, my first question would be is, do we need to put it in if everybody's already had the chance to have, do it at local government? Uh, or, but if we also need to bring somebody in on a basis that is something we look at. 
So, I mean, for me, I want the train. I want it there. I just don't want the implicit that we're going to provide all the training in house. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's about developing that program. Um, financial literacy. I'm great. Let's stick media above and, and keep financial literacy as an own bullet. It, it's prime. I think uh, if we could do that small amendment, people are generally so I head nod. So everybody's okay with that. Okay. Um, Ten's good. Uh, manager succession. I mean, I think. I guess my comments on that would be um, definitely we need to at least be thinking about some sort of succession plan. I think it's important that part of our work with our city managers say is what sort of plan does she have for her directors? What is she doing? How is she bringing them along? Uh, and to a certain extent, uh, as her um, city manager, part of what her role, I believe, should be is to provide council an opportunity within the organization to say, here is two, three, or four people that you may want to consider. You know, that part of your job is to get people ready and trained. Um, but that doesn't preclude you from doing an outside search as well. But I mean, it, it essentially is saying that part of the manager's role is to prepare the successor. Uh, it's pretty standard in any corporation. I mean, again, you don't, sort of if you like the way the ship's going, you usually hire internally. And if you want radical change, you know, you, you hire externally. So those are all choices you have. But I think it's always great uh, to have that work going on, that you're having an eye on who's the succession, and, and if that happens, it's all the way through the uh, through the agency. So, I'm okay with saying ensure council plans for city manager succession. As Jeff says, in no way does that preclude us from having to pick the person that that the, the one, two, or three that are provided and go outside, just that we know that we have that opportunity. So, uh, I prefer to leave it the way it is, uh, but we could add in part of the question is. Um, well, the city manager has management succession plans in place for the future leadership needs of the city, which includes directors. So we've actually captured it all within that, that point. So I think that's okay. I'm with you on the mentorship program. You don't want to force it. I, I think in that little council orientation that you have uh, at the beginning, you might say you may choose to go find one, two, or three mentors. And this is what mentors usually do: someone to bounce ideas off. And I'm sure most of us have that, but understanding what that role is, and, and then of course. New councillors always been open, so I don't think we need to have 12. Um, but we understand that that's part of. What, what number was that? Where's the orientation? Um, develop a written document. Okay. Anyways, the orientation for councillors might include that piece. Um, I, I think, though, I'm heard here from here is there's two things around the education program. Um, there's one where we get educated and their skills and stuff that we need to develop to do our job well. Uh, and then there's a different education process, which is public education, um, that we have, for example, in our Connects newsletter. The quarterly, we put out to our, and I'm sure that in our July edition will be, here's council's strategic priorities for the next year. And then quarterly, we can update you know, people what we're working on. Some people may choose to read it. Some people may choose not. Um, I hate to say it, one of the realizations that I came forward with is that um, it's easier to run as an incumbent, you're way more defensive than you are as a newbie because you haven't done anything yet that you have to be accountable for. <laughs> you know, uh, once you get elected and you have some time in, now you're accountable. And then that's and as a public process, people will conveniently choose to ignore everything you've told them over the last three years uh, and then bring up uh, your highlights. And, and your job as a counselor is to say, these are things I've done and I'm proud of. And then the public decides which one is the better strategic plan. Arguably, the public said we're the strategic planners. So so I think we need to keep that idea. But I do think that being part of the stuff we've talked about is, you know, within that Connects newsletter and many other ways is, here's actually what the job description of a mayor is. Here's actually what the job description of a counselor is. Here's what we're supposed to do and how we do it. You know, even when we talk about developing a um, appropriate conduct and, and as far as to lobbying efforts, that's something you put in there and tell people that this is the stuff that we do and how we process. Here's what happens to your complaints, here's the process of what we deal with and those sort of things. That's just good communication with your public. Um, and frankly, it's nice when it's written down that we carry those around and remind ourselves of uh, when we're talking to the public. So, so I think we don't lose that piece about educating the public. Uh, I just don't think it belongs in number eight. That it has its own special piece that we responsibility that we have uh, somewhere else. But I don't, So I don't want to lose it there. I just don't think it belongs in number eight. It's that public education process. So we lose it. Pam. Um, and, and it may not belong here within council's own governance policy, but I think 
the, the spirit of the um, opportunities that Shelley brought up, I'm really anxious not to lose them. And I think the opportunities I'm looking for are ones that are not characterized as them and us. I mean, Connect Newsletter is great, but that's us telling them. Yeah. And so what I would be looking for are opportunities where we're not sitting at a council table or a committee table, but that we're part of a, an audience of the public, and there's a presentation, and we're all hearing it, and we're all interacting and asking questions. So I want to make sure that that's not lost. If it's not appropriate for it to be here, where would it be appropriate? And in terms of... Um, using resources to their best advantage if we were, if, it, if there were instances where we were bringing in someone outside of staff, wouldn't it make sense to share that with the public yeah, versus? Absolutely. So I just don't want to lose that because I think it's a really important component and that it's not, it's interactive and not reactive. So does that have to go on a parking lot list in terms of our own um, sort of? Well, I, what I noted in the discussion was a desire for a an item that identifies public outreach opportunities, opportunities to inform the public as to what the city's strategic priorities are. Um, uh, what I got out of Council Madoff's comments was an interactive type yeah. of forum, like a town hall style setting where it's, it's not a one way, it's a two way. Yeah. So I, I, I would simply identify that and add that, uh, and we'll figure out where it goes on the list. But and it certainly would be helpful, for example, the financial literacy. I mean, it might be something that this, okay. everybody within the capital region, councillors and mayors, would be interested in coming to. Like, it's not exclusive to us. So again, it might be something better driven through the CRD. So as we highlight that, it might be something we can push at the CRD table, say, within those form of form type possibilities, there might be some annual training that all councillors uh, throughout the region can, can get into and provide a greater understanding and discussion. Uh, where does that leave us? I had with? a question. Oh, sorry, Shelley. Oh, I forgot number 13. Just back to 12. And just it's just a thought, rather than strike it, is encourage mentorship of new counselors. I mean, i got to tell you, I mean, other than thanks for the... Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't, you know, and, and not, not to take it all personally, but it, it, I, oh, it was tough. I've never come into a more... Um, hostile environment in my, not hostile, but an environment of not uh, an unsupportive, like if I was to hire a new chef and, 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 and they experienced what I felt I experienced, oh, it, as a business person, I would not recommend that. I think there needs to, if we just put encourage mentorship of new counselors, period. It, it's just a reminder to existing counselors that, you know, we're, we're there to help the new people come in and to put all, it's a reminder that after a, a negative debate, you know, a negative election process, okay, the healing has to start and it's got to start uh, with us. So I, 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 I'm a little bit, uh, that's just my point, I, I hate to see it completely struck because I think it's an important, uh, given my personal experience, I think it would be nice to, and, and it's also, it's encouraging mentorship from the staff as well, and I'm not, not the staff teaching us, but staff kind of gently, and it's not, like I said, it wasn't just the council room, it was just those first, I've never felt sort of, anyhow. so that's just, just a comment, but it was palpable, it was not the nicest experience I've ever gone through, that's for sure. Not that I, politics, I guess, it's not supposed to be nice. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, my two cents. I guess the difficulty I have is, when someone says something that if no one counters it, that people agree with your decision. No, so, no, no, well then so, so all I'm saying is, I didn't find with, around the table with anybody at this table any sort of negative political stuff through the election process. I thought it for around the table, that was fine, so I didn't have that. And, and I think fundamentally, it's kind of like the golf game. One thing I've learned is don't try to tell someone how to fix their swing unless they ask you. You know, because it's sort of the worst advice is that that's offered that's not welcome. So, so all I'm saying is, if you, if the, it's a two-way street. If you want help, come and ask somebody. Say, what do you do about this, or why is this happening? Well, I'm and I'm that sure now. that everybody around this table would step up and say, thanks for asking. Let me either help you do it. So, so I'm sorry. So I just I'm doing that now, but I'm just saying, okay, then maybe it's it's not a mentorship program, but it, it, it's a what is it? It's a I don't know. Welcome. It's just hospitality, guys. It's, it's, anyhow, maybe it doesn't need to be a strike it and just. Remember next time. I don't know. 
I think it's important. I think the mentorship idea of having mentors and both reminding other uh, new counselors as part of the orientation process that they can ask new counselors, old counselors for some assistance, but it's also that that, that piece is captured within the orientation. Piece. Or yeah. maybe it's a more fulsome orientation. Uh, Councilor Alpha? Uh, I, actually, <laughs> I actually really like the encouraging language, but uh, I think maybe we can capture some of that when we look at the culture and dynamics section in ah, 27, 28, 29. We can either change some language or add it in or something, because I, I think what I'm hearing is a resistance to formalizing yeah. a mentorship program, and a lot of this is about formal right. processes mm -hmm. and training yeah. and yeah. education yeah. and all that kind Fair of enough. stuff. But the cultural aspect is what I'm hearing you speak to, and maybe that we can capture some of that when we get to that later yeah. section. Maybe a suggestion. So strike out the formal mentorship yeah. program, but speak to right. the, don't lose that issue when we come back to that next section. Okay, Council, where are we? Uh, talking around, Lisa, are you gonna try and bundle I'm something together here? Yeah, cool. well, just to approve the, uh, the section as amended, striking 12, and then I'm, I think we've just taken media out of nine and put it into eight, so that nine is specifically focused on finances. So I'll move those. And did you wish to capture the public outreach interactive oh, yeah. oh, yes. issue? So don't lose that we didn't find it somewhere. Yeah, I, I wouldn't fuss about where it goes. I mean, I would, if that's something you want, we'll figure out where it goes. I, we would just want you to yeah, identify it as, as a... Some of the Again, just looking at the other sections, it might be something we could throw in under accountability in some way. Stop reading it. <laughs> yeah, stop reading it. You told me to read and prepare. There you go. It, anyway, we could, we might just have a look at it there. That section. Yeah, I think it's maybe even as a standalone item to consider in the future or as part of a civic engagement strategy. Because um, it is really a little bit more about civic literacy and it's more about residents and bringing them up to steam beyond how we govern ourselves and our internal relations. One area though is if item eight, which we've already approved, does capture that in including the, the public where appropriate in this education framework is a way we can contribute ah. to that. Public where appropriate, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah. That if we're bringing experts yeah, in, they sit in the gallery. Public where appropriate, yeah, um, shared with other municipalities or CRD yeah. where appropriate. Yeah, well, sure. Including the public and other yeah. office holders where, yeah. where appropriate. And if we brought them here anyhow, we can, mm -hmm. yeah. won't be more expensive to mm -hmm. have them engage with the public at the same time, or less expensive. But I think what Shelley's touched on is the need for maybe a, a, a new initiative aimed at civic literacy which would be something to discuss down the road at the council table, what form that could take between now and the next election. To narrow that gap in perception between what council does and how it's perceived. There's a cluster of recommendations here that go from uh, number 14 through number 23. So I'm just gonna focus on the ones I can see on the screen at the moment. Uh, 14, uh, following Council's annual strategic planning session, identify significant issues that Council wishes to discuss in greater detail for the following 12 months. The forward agenda, as it's called. I think elements of that are captured in the quarterly reporting that Gail does on the strategic priorities, the top 20 list. Um, and the shaping of that uh, is brought to you on different basis, so we use project charters as one means for you to touch in on uh, significant projects and uh, others are simply routine reporting on, on items as they progress through their uh, development and implementation. At number 15, plan council meeting agendas around the forward agenda and council's key governance and decision making responsibilities. That connects back to one of the earlier recommendations just around having a uh, a yearly roadmap that signals to you when these types of issues are going to be coming to you. So we use the budget as an example of February's budget month, June is annual reporting month, um, similar types of things and connecting that to uh, programming the meeting agendas that you face uh, at that particular time of year. I consider the timing of meetings to ensure as much as possible that councillors and staff are not subjected to undue length of meetings. Um, there are some specific recommendations about that in the 
second part of this discussion, uh, the, uh, the staff uh, recommendations uh, that are consistent with this particular uh, recommendation. So I don't think they're mutually exclusive at all. Establish an annual calendar that delineates council's responsibilities and how they are addressed throughout the year. And again, that connects back to this roadmap. Uh, what is budget month? What is annual reporting performance measurement month? What is auditing month? Those types of uh, signals for you. And I'll just go through 18 here before I, I pause. Uh, for matters being brought forward for council discussion approval, consider developing a template that requires the report to address a number of things, and, and uh, Elizabeth has uh, listed those out, the issue, the background, how it fits with your strategic plan and priorities, how it fits with the community plan, the capital plan is appropriate, uh, financial implications, staffing implications, risk profile, options, recommendations, and then the formal resolution that council is being asked. Many of our, our reports do capture a number of those elements, whether they're structured in the right way or they consistently capture those uh, might be something for you to consider. Um, you want me to run through right to the end here? Sure. Yeah. Uh, number 19, for reporting against the strategic plan or business plan, considering using a dashboard that will allow council to see the reported data in a time efficient way. So the approach that Gail has implemented is a modification of that sort of dashboard approach. We use the, the green, red, yellow uh, signals. We have the timelines laid out for you, and we have brief summaries as to, uh, I guess, what we call variance reporting, when something is not on track, uh, to signal to you uh, the reasons for that. Number 20, ensure the presentations do not simply repeat and pre-read materials. If PowerPoints used, limit the number of slides and have presenters. So. Uh, that's, I think, uh, try to value add to uh, the time you have at the table to focus the decisions on uh, what the uh, issue is and um, not uh, unduly waste your time and the public's time uh, going through something in the data way. Other than, of course, this presentation. <laughs> 21, uh, ensure there are in-camera sessions for the councillors and the city manager for councillors alone on a regular basis. I think this is in relation to uh, relationship building, uh, discussions about how, uh, uh, how the meeting was, uh, respectful conduct, code of conduct types of issues. Uh, once matters are decided, don't revisit them unless there are extreme extenuating circumstances. Uh, that, of course, is a political consideration, but it has real administrative and financial implications from time to time. Simply because if we, if the staff have been given a direction and acted on those directions, undoing those directions can have consequences. And prepare written policies that provide guidance on meeting procedures, including when the agenda and information must be provided and the use of in-camera meetings. So we have documented that internally, whether we publish that effectively for council, uh, we don't know. Uh, we can certainly also document that process in our agenda uh, information on the uh, website uh, so for the public's convenience. And then I think in the uh, detailed recommendations uh, from staff, there is also a suggestion of, uh, of uh, more formally considering a, a closed meeting policy or a, a, a guidelines for staff to uh, approach the camera and closed meetings um, with certain priorities or certain issues in mind when they're considering whether those are in a closed meeting or in an open meeting. And again, there's many detailed things in the uh, the other spreadsheet that uh, touch on these types of issues. Just a couple of comments. Um, under 18, where it lists off all of the matters that should uh, be part of a report, um, <laughs> Uh, I've found, actually, as a newer council member, that one of the most interesting and sometimes helpful aspects of reports that I've seen have a historical aspect, which mm -hmm. in a planning sense either speaks to previous use or in a more policy or, or sort of subjective sense, just provides a bit of a historical background over and above you know, the, what the bare facts might be in the background piece. And so I, I, don't, I don't know exactly how to capture that for a general report, but I do think just as a note that, that if, the, if there is any historical information that's relevant, that it might be something that needs to be included just as a regular additional piece of information. Because sometimes seeing what the previous considerations were even a year or two ago can be extremely helpful in trying to situate the current decision making 
in, in current circumstances. So I, I would want to maybe suggest that. I don't know. Do you want to do the whole block? Because I wanted to talk about 21. OK, yeah. so I mean, within 18, uh, where it says background, you want to be including historical? Like yes. Yeah, so continue. You want to go into 21? Keep on. OK. Uh, just in 21, uh, I had two questions, actually. One was a question, and I, maybe I'll, I'll ask uh, a different way. Uh, one was for me around frequency. I thought monthly was a bit frequent, frankly. But when I listened to um, Mr. Woodland's explanation about this, I'm not sure this is in the right place. Because if, in fact, we're not talking about in-camera sessions that deal specifically with business, which are attached to other meetings as required based on the substance of the business, but my impression listening to Mr. Woodland that this was more of a matter of providing uh, counselors as a group or counselors with the city manager for an opportunity to have uh, exchanges of information or conversations or I think you might have talked about team building something like that I don't think this fits here and I think of it from the perspective of wanting to avoid the issues that arise around convening meetings when there are a majority of counselors present this sounded to me like more of a team building exercise an opportunity for us to have conversation that wasn't necessarily based on a particular issue or a substance or a matter that's coming before council. And if that's the case, I wondered whether or not it shouldn't more accurately be done again into the culture and dynamics section, where you're saying, you know, any good team improves when it has an opportunity to build a relationship. That's not based on debating a particular issue. That's based on providing a more relaxed opportunity to share information and have conversation about whatever. And that helps build a team. And if that's what's trying to be captured here, I don't think it should be under agendas and meetings. I think it should be under culture and dynamics. So that was just kind of a question in the comment. Just nice so, uh, I have oh, no, I just wanted to respond to Marianne's question, what she was saying. Is this not the appropriate time? Just because on that one line. No? Uh, on the line, go ahead, Shelley. Like well, just on the line of I think it is important to I think when I sit down with council in like when we had lunch, mm -hmm. you can hear history. We can share about issues. So mm -hmm. it's not necessarily team building as much as it is creating an opportunity mm -hmm. to discuss. So that's, and without the media present, without, it's an informal way to really have some fulsome discussion about issues that might be coming up, that might, so I think it's different than team building, or could, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's an interesting it's point. It's meeting though. It's, not anyway, a, just it's a, an yeah, opportunity yeah. for, it's almost like council sharing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. No? Okay. The difficulty, uh, well, sorry, before I, I have to jump in on this one, I apologize. Um, we can't talk about issues. Yeah. We can't talk about things coming up. That That's not appropriate. That needs to be in a public realm, or else privately, with full notice and all of that sort of stuff. Well, that's I why I don't think it should be here. It's more of an opportunity yeah. for council to talk among themselves on how we are working together right. mm -hmm. uh, and to talk with their city manager about how that relationship is working right. and things going on for a chance to sit down. So, so it's more is of a management tool right. than it is a meeting tool, which is why I don't think it's in the right section. Because so that's having it, down culture. Yeah, yeah, having that in this section implies to me that this is about agenda right. items on okay. meetings and that's entirely in your, con you know, what you explained that's not really appropriate because it's not necessarily a public. But I, I like what this is trying to capture, but I think it needs to be part of the whole culture dynamic discussion. So I would suggest that some, and I'd like to speak more to the, some other issues around that, but I think 21 should drop into the culture dynamic section so that it's clear that it's not about, it's not about dealing with meeting issues in private. It's dealing with creating a positive working culture. And I think that's what that's trying to capture lower down. Okay, thank you. Uh, back to the speakers list is Jeff, Ben, and then Shelley. Yes. Oh, okay, on 16, I think it's um, not so much the length of the meetings as having uh, the, the meetings on the same day that's the concern of the planning meeting followed by the GPC. I think we should address that issue. On 18, I'm concerned that um, I, w I wouldn't want the report format to have to include all of these items. We'll just get boilerplate in response to a lot of them and uh, the, the reports will just get long and cloudy. I think uh, I think to the extent there are issues connected with any of these, um, they should be addressed, but, but not, I don't want a report that just goes through and 
sticks in some reference to the strategic plan on every on every report. Um, the um, uh, I, yeah, tw twenty one contradicts some of the other stuff about reasons for intended meetings. I I I think there's a concern with it. Um, in any event, when, no matter where it's placed, there are clear legislative requirements for when we need a camera, and there's no point trying to um, defeat those. Uh, similarly, for 22, there are very clear uh, requirements for bringing subjects back. There's, they're there, they're written, they're, they're, they're firm, you know, often. a lot of them are in legislation, there's no there's no reason to have another another statement that just says something that I guess some people would consider desirable and some not. Um, I think for 18, maybe we could add the words where appropriate after in a summary way, and be before all the bullets, which implies that not, those don't all need to be in it. Um, or we could do it on specific ones. So, for example, the three fit with the fit with strategic plan, comma community plan, comma twenty year capital plan where appropriate. It would just reduce. Yeah. The list, though, and the council just goes to NA. I mean, so the, the staff goes to NA. But I want to know that they actually turn their mind to the twenty year. Even if there's not good, please think. So, anyways, that, uh, I'm sorry I jumped in, but and then no problem. Um, and then also in the interest of triple bottom line, having financial without social and environmental, I think is problematic given council's past policy direction. So either I think standalone social implications and environmental implications, or an omnibus one, financial, social, and environmental implications. I think if we are serious about a triple bottom line approach, then it should certainly be within the template for reports. And the last item comes out of actually what we learned at the LGLA and several workshops and discussions I had with Shelley and Lisa. The idea when we get options that those should be, th that the ideal to be aimed at, I think, would be three distinct, um, meaningful, and feasible options. So I think. Um, both here but at the CRD as well. Sometimes there's an inclination to have the option that's really fleshed out is the recommendation and the other two are skeletal um, and sort of not presented in a really substantive way, but I think we're probably going to make the best decision um, if staff do sort of cost out to some extent and think through the implications of three distinct alternatives uh, and then count the council can have before them in policy making. So, I was thinking if we could say uh, options considered where appropriate, three distinct feasible options. And we've seen that, for example, in the garbage survey, there were three distinct options. And so we did have a second, we actually had two other options at our disposal. And as per Councillor Alto's recommendation, when council opted to change course, it picked one of the other options that staff had prepared for us. So I guess institutionalizing that kind of procedure. Thank you. Um, and a range of different things, some of which are on here and some of which aren't. Um, the historic piece, we'll start with 18, the historic piece that Councillor Alto referred to, I think is useful. We ran into it uh, with a standing committee report that came on financing mm -hmm. just a little while ago. And there was much discussion around the council table. And if we'd include the, included the minutes from the standing committee, I think most of those would have been uh, forestalled. Most of the answers would have been obvious. So it, maybe it's not a full history, but it's the uh, recording of the discussion that was had at the standing committee or the other committees, I think, would be useful as an addition in that because it just adds flesh to the bones of the motion, which is temp what we tend to react to. On the issue of timings of meetings, we moved to the system that we're in now as a result of the Cuff report, and we've got ourselves into every second Thursday um, this, this ever-increasing time span of meeting. I, I'm not sure that we shouldn't go back to the old system. We have to at least consider um, dealing with 
committee to hold our GPC meetings every Thursday and try and manage around that and try and, and hold ourselves to 8.30 to 12 or something like that and, and then manage the rest of around that. I just think it stops. I, I, I question um, the diminishment of our intellectual capacity as we get later into the afternoon on some weighty issues. So I think that's an issue. And the other one is um, the opportunity we quite often get asked to have a public presentation on the Thursday morning from a community organization of some form or other. And invariably they want 10 minutes, but it expands to 40 minutes, whatever. I, I'm not sure we shouldn't be looking at an opportunity, you know, I said maybe 5 o'clock one night, one Tuesday a month or something, where we organize for two hours and make that the place where community organizations come and speak to council. We don't make any decisions. We hear their report, and we can direct it on. Because otherwise, we run into this conundrum where we allow some people to present for legitimate reasons, um, and we say no to others. And they immediately say, you just don't like us. And that usually isn't the issue, but that's the perception. So I just hold those out as, as three different options that I think might be useful in our contemplations. A couple of those threads are in the, the staff section yeah. that we can pick up on as we move along. So, uh, so generally the practices, when people come to GPC are those that are statutorily or contractually required to do so. So for example, we give money to the Greater Victoria Economic Development Agency. They must, under their terms of reference, come to present to that. So, uh, same with uh, Dockside, we've got one coming up. They are under the Master Development Agreement, yeah. must come in. So, so part of our job as council liaison is actually to say to people, the only people who actually get on there are those people. So, I mean, that, that's part of the role we need to do. And, and, uh, so, I think that one of the reflections we may want to have council is that if our intellectual capacity is being challenged, uh, that perhaps staffs, both capacity and intellectual, is also, and it might just be a case of not about having another meeting, is maybe we just need to manage our work better. Because um, we come and we meet and then staff has to go make it happen. And that's part of the capacity issue that we'll have. So before we start doubling up meetings just to do more, um, it really I don't know if staff can do more. And perhaps it's more about doing them in order when they're ready. And that might be a better way to look at it. Um, uh, so, uh, but that, that will be the will of council. Um, I agree that 21 should drop down. Uh, I think that's that's very again misplaced. I'm always uh, on number 18. I agree that the um, background and history were appropriate. Is good. I like to keep them all, as I said, because then they at least say there is no risk or there is risk. Or I just want I want to make sure they turn their mind to it. Under option considers, I mean, I always laugh sometimes because you know you get the ones at CRD, which is options to do it or not. <laughs> that was it, right? I mean, I mean, you almost create a, a, a false thing that they they have to come up. I also don't want staff running off, spending a whole lot of time researching um, on options that just aren't viable, just so they can say I met the three, and and, and, and doesn't happen. So, you know, and, and staff always staff has to anticipate what council wants, uh, and they pay the risk when they don't deliver, right? And sort of like. And, and if they're, to a certain extent, council starts to believe that they're showing a bias by not presenting options, when we know they exist, then council will say, our job is say, this one needs to be fleshed out more. And that's part of our role. But uh, I mean, so anyways, it's one of those ones about, uh, yeah, I'd like to know what all the options are. But I also think they have to do a recommendation. That's what we pay for uh, as our staff stuff. We don't always go with that. But, so I, I don't know. I don't want to be really rigid and say you must do three. Uh, and you must research them all to the, to the nth degree. Cause Sometimes they just fight with that. The other one which I want to throw into number 23 is a suggestion um, on, on meeting procedures. It's one of the things that just struck me as unusual, um, and especially what it features within the, our priority setting sessions, is that um, at GPC, um, that you don't need a seconder uh, for any motions that come forward, or even notice of motions. And I think that we should, and you do have to have a council. I, I think that that would be something that we should seriously consider. Uh, that any before any motions are brought to the table that it needs a second. It's always nice to know that at least one other person is interested in the issue that you want to bring forward. And most importantly, often there's a, an advantage of a second person saying, well, okay, I like that, but try and craft it this way or sort of have that influence. So 
Um, we don't want the, the rules and procedures to pull council off its priorities. Uh, we, we, we did a good job for the last, in the last term of trying to stick to priorities. And then, of course, election season came and it was done. Everybody was bringing every motion that they thought they could uh, get their name in a paper in or get behind a cause or that sort of stuff. So uh, I think that within this, I'd like to consider council just in good governance is to say that at GPC we should have seconders. Uh, and if somebody's provided a notice of motion, that there's a requirement that there should be a second to that motion. So uh, that, that's an extra piece I'd like to add in. And it just deals with that. So um, further to that, uh, that one and other things suggested. Lisa, you've done a great job of bundling stuff up for us. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't actually spoken to this yet, so I'll, I'll, I'm happy to bundle. Yeah, so I, I, 18 is really important to me. Um, because I think that we do need to be aware of what all of the implications are. And without asking staff to do all of the work, an NA is fine if it's if there's no implication. But for something like, you know, I wasn't here, for example, with the Traveler's Inns, um, financial implications of that is the cost of the building, but it's also the amazing amount of staff time and resources that we're going to have to go into it. So, I, I, and I know that's there, but I, I, staffing implications are also financial implications. And so I just want to highlight the importance of that to me. Um, I would, I don't want, uh, I would suggest striking 21 from this section. And uh, in, uh, as, as Councilor Rubble suggested, we'll debate whether it's necessary or desirable at all. But um, I also would like to strike uh, in accordance with what uh, Councilor Young said, 22. Because I think new information arises. We, we don't want to create undue work for staff, so we would never bring something back just because we feel like it the next day. But I think that that limits our capacity to govern well by having 22 there. So I would move everything, including your recommendation to have a seconder at GPC with the exception of 21 and 22. Okay, with the implication that 21 will drop down to discuss the and culture and dynamics? Correct. Okay, and motion on the table. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, Council, just you know my intention, hopefully, if we finish this up by 2.30, as well, a five-minute strike break. And then we come back for it. Yes. <laughs> more fun. We. Thank you. More fun. More fun. Hey, Everything in a bag uh, of chips, too. Next section is Council staff relationship. There's three recommendations provided. Uh, number 24, for prepare written guidelines that provide guidance on the appropriate level of interaction between counselors and, imi and individual staff members. And I believe the, the reference is more to staff at the operational level as opposed to appropriate contact between yourselves and the, the uh, city manager, the general managers, and directors, uh, but guidelines nonetheless. Uh, provide guidance in 25 on how counselors should handle, handle concerns about city manager or staff performance. Uh, in this section, include reference to the use of in-camera meetings as a venue for such discussions. I think that touches on uh, uh, number 21 to some extent uh, in the sense that uh, the community charter does authorize council to discuss employee relations. So the relationship of the board, the council, with the administration is a bona fide topic for which you can close the meeting. And 26, uh, create opportunities for relationship building between councillors and senior management. Again, that again uh, speaks to this employee relations uh, type of topic that can, if council wishes, be considered in a closed meeting. So three uh, recommendations there. Yeah, I, uh, I support these. And I think with 21 that we striked out, um, I think this addresses that because I kind of, the mayor articulated that it's the management issue as well as I guess team building. I think it's that management issue that, that's important. That uh, So I think 25 captures that, that from time to time. Under, there's nothing, we, we're not evading any statute by meeting in camera to discuss labor and employee relations. that when 
you want to have a dialogue between yourselves as the council, it's seen to be just that, the council meeting with the administration. And the charter, I think, contemplates that by permitting that to be a closed meeting item where the council needs to discuss its relationship with the administration, the employees that the council employs. So the importance of it having it at a meeting of GPC or council is that everyone at this table is invited to attend that meeting. There's no selectivity, there's no exclusivity. It's the council properly convened having the dialogue with the administration. So the informal settings under which you might talk about this, that, or the other thing uh, can exclude members of council by virtue of their absence or appointments that conflicted or those types of things. When you convene as a body at a meeting, you're all invited, you're all expected to attend, and there's a good reason for everyone to be involved because you are collectively as the council having a dialogue with the administration. So it's important not to forget that, that there's a bona fide purpose for the council to have those discussions at a properly convened meeting so that everyone has the opportunity to attend and to participate in that <coughs> discussion. Okay, uh, so I hear what you're saying part of the evil we're trying to correct is two, three, or four councillors going to meet with a couple of directors and, and ultimately you know, setting policy without council as a body so, you know, providing that, that you don't want to have that for lack of a better term, you know, cabals or things growing. Um, and good, um, it almost seems like you set time aside during the strategic planning that you do annually or whatever, that you have that piece where you're at the very end, you're just sitting down as council with your directors uh, and city managers and, 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 is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, so maybe that can tie into the strategic planning sort of process that we make sure that we sort of build that in. Okay. Cool. Any other thing under council staff relationship? I think there's a recommendation that we get rid of. Um, oh, 21 is not going to show up under cultural no. dynamics. That is sort of captured under 25. So oh, right no, I didn't hear that. We haven't got here yet. So I thought Councillor Ben said. Well, I wasn't necessarily suggesting it because it doesn't, is that there's a distinct team building function. So maybe when we get to the next section. Difference. Okay, okay, good. Well, so something that didn't come to mind though is if we are having quarterly reporting on strategic planning, maybe that would be an effective time to institutionalize an in-camera component to touch base with the city manager, uh, just a general, rather than responding to a crisis by clearing the room or having a limited in-camera meeting, having a more cyclical and proactive uh, touching base on yeah, general employee yeah. and labor relations issues. And that might be the meeting. If we get a public presentation on how we're meeting our strategic planning objectives, we have a parallel in-camera meeting just between council and the manager. Yep. Well, once again, you have a legislative requirement what you're allowed to meet on. You can't say we're going to be an open council and we're, only, we're always going to declare why we're meeting in camera and then say every three months we're going to have an in-camera meeting. To discuss employee relations. Okay, well then you, we don't have to oh. have that in here. The oh. city staff brings forward a report that says we have an employee relations issue to discuss. It has to be discussed in camera. There's no requirement for any change in our procedures. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if that happens on a quarterly basis, right? Presumably it happens when it's necessary. And I'm suggesting maybe if we knew it was institutionalized, it wouldn't just happen when the fire is breaking up. It would be preemptive and it could ensure more regular. Oh, okay. Fire breaking up the house. Yes. But it's not okay. that this may still, no, maybe it's not a fire, maybe it's just a neighbor and I can put it off for a month or two, I'll make sure I bring it up then. Or there's not even, or things are just coming oh, along yeah. magically and that's, we have a very brief. I think the intention of Ms. Watson was very much that it is a systematic, periodic, check in and then you've got a legitimate reason to have it and it's about the relationship between the board and the administration and on some occasions there may be lots to talk about and on some occasions there may be nothing to talk about 
but it's simply providing the opportunity in a, in a periodic, systematic way so the door is open, the dialogue is open. Because the, the, the report from Ms. Watson comments on the fact that the mayor has regular meetings with individual councillors. Gail's door is open to the council members to discuss issues with them. But where is the opportunity collectively as the board of this organization to speak to the administration through Gail in a, in a planned sort of periodic systematic way? That, that's what I got out of her report. Yeah. Well, just in speaking to what Jeff, you mentioned earlier, isn't Liz Watson a governance expert? Is she an expert? Well, what, what, so. No, but, you ask. no, but why would <laughs> <laughs> I hope she is. Well, I hope she's an expert. I hope she wouldn't be telling us stuff that goes directly against legislated. Like if it, you were saying to my earlier But my comment, view, it, it is against the legislation unless, I mean, as Ben said, you can say we will require each quarter that the city manager provide us a report on staff issues. Uh, that is, people I'm thinking I'm going to have to fire people who are really doing great, whatever it is, that's fine. But what you can't do is say, we are going to get together every three months and kick around a few ideas. That is what the legislation is specifically designed to prevent. So why would she recommend it? <laughs> I don't know. We hire a lot of people. I don't she agree. may have been recommending that A, you Well, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with that interpretation. Yeah. The Act says you may close a meeting for the purposes of discussing labor relations and employee relations. Has that been defined in law through uh, some sort of court precedent? I don't think so. Um, you know, I can't think of why the legislature would preclude the council from having an opportunity to discuss in an open and honest way what the council views as its relationship with its city manager. I mean, I think that in and of itself, basically ties itself to the city manager's quarterly reports and performance reviews. Uh, I mean, there's an extra piece that says it's also a chance for council. I mean, if it's not here, then someone else has. <laughs> Sorry, she has a drinky problem. <laughs> uh, but also for council to, to, uh, to be able to talk among itself about how it functions. So as long as it's understood that, uh, we're okay that way. But no, as Jeff said, it would be inappropriate for us to be bringing up issues. But, and we need to be vigilant about that. But I think there's also, to be fair, there's an optical issue. Um, the opportunity to go in camera used to be very constrained. You know, it was the labor land legal. Um, the community charter has broadened that, and there are some organizations that choose to do it more often, and some choose to do it less often, um, because it's about transparency to the public. So where you decide on this, and I think Mr. Woodland was quite right. I, I think the recommendation from Liz is within the legal parameters. The question is, do we politically want to go and say we're going to go into a larger range of in-camera meetings, or do we want to constrain that and say only when specific issues come up? I, I think that's the discussion. I'm lost. Where are we? Um, are we in 24, 25, 26? 25. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to vary to 25. Mm -hmm. okay. Lisa? Oh, sorry, Charlene. And I was going to go to Lisa the bundle again. Yeah, I, I'm just in meeting 25. I think it, it is suggested that there's guidance provided, and it goes back to the main body of the report in that respectful behavior being the foundation of a positive working relationship. And so it means that when we have concerns, instead of saying, "Oh, I have a concern," just airing it and perhaps not being respectful or not uh, having enough background or something, that there be some guideline that says, okay, if, if you have some it's concerns, this is the best way for us to deal with it so that it's not a, become it's a legal issue for the city or an embarrassment or, you know, if it's a personnel issue, they're, just to say there are appropriate means for us to deal with some of those concerns. That was my understanding of what 25 is asking. Lisa? So I think there's, I have, after I knocked over my tea glass twice, found the appropriate section of the council bylaw. And I think th there's, the, there's the may section and the must section. And I think what Jeff's getting at is we actually don't have to, according to the, our bylaw, go in camera to discuss employee relations. 
That's not, that's part of the may. A council may be closed if we're discussing labor or employee relations, but we don't necessarily have to. So I think what she's suggesting here in number 25, that's why it says include reference to the use of in-camera meetings as a venue for such discussion. So if this policy in these guidelines, it might be that staff says, we recommend always going in camera as per 12.3A, 12.3C when this is being discussed or we recommend sometimes or we recommend never. So if, if we just, if we don't want to have to leave that in camera section here, we could, we could just strike out 25, the second sentence of 25 and be guided by our own bylaw rather than asking staff to interpret it for us. And I think it connects to an issue that's on the, the other table, which is a policy around closed meetings. Exactly. Because I, I'll give an example just to help hopefully close the discussion. If council was offended by my conduct at this table and wanted to raise that issue with the city manager as a disciplinary issue, I would hope that you would do that in a closed meeting. Mm -hmm. in, the <clears throat> in the same way, if council's remarks in an open meeting uh, cause great concern for uh, employees of the city, hopefully Gail would raise that issue with you in a closed meeting, the impacts that those types of statements have had on the organization and the things you should be mindful of. So it's that flavor of thing that, I, that I'm talking about, in addition to, you know, just generally building a constructive relationship between the council and the city manager. So then I'll move the section with the second section, second sentence of 25 struck. Opposed, carried. Culture and dynamics. So we have three uh, recommendations here, plus one that was kicked about uh, prior. Uh, so 27, uh, develop a written policy that articulates council's expectations as to its working culture include the expectations in council's governance policies and I think that's partly a code of conduct and partly uh, a rules of engagement uh, type of thing. Evaluate council's culture as a part of an annual evaluation of council effectiveness so that would be a dialogue uh, that you might have with the city manager to talk about uh, how, uh, how things are going, how constructive the relationship is at the table between yourselves, how it impacts the administration. And thirdly, be proactive in scheduling activities that will help build positive relationships between councillors and among council and senior staff. So again, that's a, a team building type of uh, uh, exercise. And then the other one was, I think, 21, which was uh, ensure there's an in-camera session for councillors with the city manager and for councillors alone on a regular basis. That's sort of that systematic, uh, periodic uh, check-in. <laughs> uh, Larry Cross will love it since he is the only bowling alley in the region. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, we should be. Okay, thank you, bowling. Okay, archery then. Archery, gosh. Fencing. There's a Victoria fencing glove there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy with the bowling, uh, the bowling uh, and the archery. Oh, sorry. So. <laughs> she reminded me that there's a dodgeball challenge. So they want to come over here and bowl. Sorry. It's a team building. Are you encouraging into hostility? Yeah. yeah. I've been defending very hostile. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing hostile the, about archery. The archery is not shooting at each other. No. Yeah. No. 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 Uh, I, in my previous interactions with Liz Watson's recommendations, I uh, disagreed with her. They're pretty fundamentally on a few when, uh, it, when, uh, when she was talking to the uh, Harbor Authority. But um, item 28, I, I really, it's, it's, it's obnoxious. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, it's not... First of all, it's not the job of council to evaluate its effectiveness. It is the job of the voters Voter. to yeah. evaluate mm -hmm. the, the effectiveness right. of the council and of the individual councillors, and it's not the job of councillors to fit in with what other councillors may perceive as an appropriate culture. They can do what they darn well want 
to represent the people they are supposed to be representing, and that may or not fit in with what other people perceive as culture, um, the culture of the council, and if it doesn't fit in with what they're supposed to be doing, they'll get voted out. I think, obviously, we have things like rules of order and um, not referring unfavorably, to, for example, to past actions of the council and uh, things like that that have been built out up over the years to keep the discourse civilized and you speak to the subject and you don't make personal attacks and all those things and that's fine and if that's what's meant by culture that's that's great but uh, the evaluation I, I don't agree with at all and, and I'm a little I'm a little um, 27 the the working culture stuff I'm not very uh, enthusiastic about either but the bowling together sure bowling <laughs> bowling team I actually agree with Councillor Young on 28. Uh, but I just wanted to ask the question, I guess. Uh, 27 for me is essentially a creation of a basic code of conduct, which really isn't likely to be more than a restatement of the rules and regulations we already have. So I don't see that as a huge piece of work. And I guess um, I'm quite comfortable losing 28. Um, and 29 then for me refers back to 21. And I guess the question I would ask is, how do you be proactive around scheduling activities that help build positive relationships unless you create a social committee? I'm not speaking uh -huh. in favor of that. Let me say that right off the bat. So, but that's my question is how do you do that? And how do you then, is, is that the same as what was intended out of 21, which we've parked in this section? Or have we come to a place where we're, where we're now saying we should be more aware of the fact that it would be helpful if we did some things together on a casual basis and leave it at that? and then deal separately with the question of, is it helpful and appropriate for us to actually schedule a regular time when we get together as a group and have a potluck? And really see what comes up. Cooking, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I don't know, because it seems to me that going back to our I'm earlier discussions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come to my house, I'm a good guy. Uh, 21, original Monai, when I asked to have 21 moved out of agendas and meetings, it was under the presumption that the, the point of that was to create an opportunity for us to become more collegial and that that would ultimately have a good benefit to the greater work that we're doing. That it wasn't focused on issues or topics or stuff that might be on an agenda item, but that it was an opportunity to create collegiality and one would hope uh, to create an opportunity for us to check in with each other on how things were going, for lack of a better description. So that, if, if that's the case, again, I wonder, is it something we need to write down? Is it captured in 29? Are 21 and 29 the same thing? Or do we just want to lose them all? Uh, any other speakers? Oh, sorry, yeah, Shelley, is it Lisa? Ahead of me. Go ahead, Shelley. Yeah. Okay. Oh, One of the priorities of the chair is the same. Yeah. I, I support this section with 27 alone, and it basically if it's just a re-articulation of what already exists with maybe some tweaking, that's great. I don't favor setting regular in-camera meetings to discuss whatever, because even when we're having lunch casually, we're, you know, we're just kind of blabbing about whatever. We're, we're not talking about our kids so much, or our families, or our chickens, or, no. But, you know, whatever. You know what I'm getting at. So, yeah. So I think, I don't, I think that, we are convened as a group, not because we like each other, maybe we happen to, that would be a good thing, but because we're here to serve the citizens and, and the vision of the city. So I don't, I don't, I, you know, I, I'm hired by groups to do facilitation and feel good and culture and all that stuff, but I, I think that that's not our core function. So I'm happy with 27 and not 21, 28 or 29. Recognizing that we'll talk to each other because we share offices and we'll build relationships proactively and anyway, it's enough said. Oh, it's interesting. Um, I just find it interesting that there hasn't been one opportunity since being elected where we've gone around the table and said, my name's Shelley, and this is what I'm passionate about, this is what I love, this is who I am, this is what I believe in. I think we're sorely lacking on that opportunity. Maybe it's in the first three months after election. There's some sort of cohesive, this, these are the people you're going to be working with for the next three years. 
I think that that's what she's trying to capture in the culture and dynamics, is the opportunity to build, and it's not regular, it's not bowling nights, it's not, it's more of an in-camera meeting where the new council, it might not be required every time, or, or it might, or, well, it should be, sure. and just sort of reiterating what it is you're, who you are. I, I'm not paying attention to your campaigns when we're, you know what I mean? I don't have, uh, so I'm learning as I go about who everybody is, and we all have our strengths. You want eight, di nine diverse voices at the table. That's what's going to be healthy, but it's good to understand where they're coming from. I've Googled a couple of you guys, and I'm like, oh, that's too much to read. <laughs> you know what I mean? In a sense of, okay, where are they, what is it that they're, and I, I think it's important uh, in any organization. And it's, it's not a touchy-feely, feel-good, well, I mean, that's not how I look at it. I think there it needs to be, even if it's just 90 days after election, that we have an opportunity to build some sort of collegiality between us and, and respect the different voices rather than be angered and not understand where somebody's coming from or what their style is. I think there needs to be the opportunity to interact at council meetings like we have so you get a sense of somebody but then it just takes a little bit deeper so that you're, you're, you're not, you're, you're building collegiality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a little. Just, just some context from the previous discussion, because I recall this was a fairly animated discussion at the time. It was the issue about the fact that, it, I think the, 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 the dialectic was, are we a team or are we not a team? Well, on every issue you form those in favor, those against. And I think what Elizabeth was trying to poke at was you'll get into very passionate discussions, you'll get into disagreements, you'll get into debates, and at the end of that, you have to pick yourselves up and move on to the next issue. So you've got to be careful not to hurt each other so mortally that you paralyze yourselves in, the, in moving on to the next issue and making the next decision. So it was trying to strike that balance between um, not not duking it out so hard on an issue that you can't move forward. Your, your relationships are damaged to the point that they're not repairable. And having some sort of mechanism to release the pressure uh, when you do get very passionate and there are strong disagreements at the table. Uh, I mean, for me, I mean, I know it's a bit Pollyanna, but I, I kind of like 28 in the sense that it doesn't have to be annual. The reason why I liked it is, it, it, the purpose there isn't to say, let's become buddies, me and Jeff go and get tattoos. Uh, you know, th that isn't the purpose. It's not about building, you know, um, uh, collegiality comes. 29 but, or 28? Uh, this is 28, but sort of in the whole area. But fundamentally, I mean, as, as Mr. Woodland said, I mean, some people will vote for this, it depends what issues. I mean, there isn't blocks. That, that uh, There isn't formal relationships. There isn't an opposition. In it come together, that, that's one of the benefits of municipal government. And so I don't see it being, and, and so any, we have to work together. It doesn't mean that we always agree. Um, you know, it isn't that we only have nine different opinions and can never agree on one. Um, uh, but what it does mean that I, I think there can be value to say, are we as a council working effectively on behalf of the citizens of Victoria? Now, effectively doesn't mean we all agree. Effectively might mean um, you did a really good job of bringing, introducing an element of doubt or a question mm -hmm. that made council go, hmm, you know, uh, maybe we need to get another information on that, that piece or stuff like that. But I, I don't know the harm or, I mean, the, the, so, but for me the goal would be how are we working collectively uh, doing a good job on behalf of the citizens. Uh, if we are not, if we're dragging stuff out, we're not making decisions, if we're um, fist fighting, uh, we become entrenched in position, so it doesn't matter what anybody says, and they're going to vote for you, uh, then, then I don't think we are working effectively on behalf of citizens. And certainly you can disagree and split, and after the end of the three years, you can pick and say, I voted for these, but they didn't. And all of that will happen later, and that's part of the political process. But I think every organization as a board of directors uh, recognizing this, that you have to, and, and recognize we're a political board of directors, uh, but there is value to say, are we serving the citizens of Victoria well? Is there a way that we can do that? Um, and so having some sort of opportunity to do that is important. It's not about making nice, it's not about making friends. That collegiality will come uh, just from 
working together. But it is about saying, can I take a look at how my behavior or what I'm doing may be interfering with moving the city of Victoria forward? Uh, and at least have an opportunity for colleagues to say, why are you doing this? And those sort of things. And, and, and then you at least understand that you come from a position a position of understanding. So, I, I, you know, I mean, as laughing when I first saw this, you imagine a 360 where staff, could, you know, evaluate our effectiveness, and then we go ask, you know, all the neighborhood associations and the chamber. Like, it'd be kind of interesting to see, actually. Uh, but if you actually do it, you actually might be able to change learn your something. behavior mm -hmm. and learn something. Learn a lot. Um, and strangely, what's wrong with being a learning culture? Mm -hmm. You know? Anyway, so, so, yeah, I didn't want to do the potluck, let's go bowling in Langford type of thing, but at the same time, I, I think that in a professional sense, we should evaluate council's effectiveness. Now, how you do that, I don't know. Those are part of the, that's a bigger question. I mean, who determines what effective is, right? Uh, of, uh, so, Councilor Young? Um, well, I, I, I agree with you, Your Worship, that it is an important thing, and I think indeed that um, all the members of the council and the mayor should be doing that. I guess um, I have concerns with making it a formal evaluation mm -hmm. done by council. Uh, I was probably too flip with item 29, which uh, and I, I can see why uh, Lisa would want to just kick it out. Um, the kind of things that might actually be, the kind of activities that might help build some relationships would be Sorry. things uh, such as... Uh, Every time I have governance, somebody calls it a boss. <laughs> would be things such as um, visiting city facilities. Uh, and, and you may have all done that, but we could make that. I, I thought dovetail. I thought when we went to um, Beacon Out Park the other day and yeah. see, see what our staff is doing and uh, mm -hmm. see what we're doing for the public and then talk to our staff and, and uh, in productive. the context of learning something about what we're doing. With the meaning for life in the first 50 years of the city's history. Mm -hmm. I remember when we were in, how was the, the 2009 but all like UBCM and uh, most of us were all there and, and you know we had all these special little meetings to talk about funding preparation. We're bringing Theoretically, we're going to be able to we're doing it, spending days after day after day, we're going to be able to federal infrastructure funding. So, um, sometimes you have those happen, sometimes the proactive part is, is there something that you, you put in? I don't know. Sean? Sure. Is there, because I like the idea of this, is not just because I like it, but if, <laughs> is there a way to build some flexibility into it so that we can try it? It's a trial, just to see whether, do you know what I mean? Before we just throw it out without giving it due consideration. It has been recommended by an expert who thinks that, you know, I'm just wondering if there's, Gail? I wonder, through your worship, if, um, if the recommendation is just to look at what other cities are doing in this area and come back with a series of options. Because there are some cities that are doing some stuff in okay. this area. And, and then you could take a look at those options and see whether they're in fact something that you'd be interested in or not. Bundle it all up. <laughs> See how quickly you get reputation. <laughs> bundle, bundle. Um, I actually just wanted to pick up on, on Shelley's comment earlier on, and I, I actually uh, do think that there would be merit in s making sure that there's uh, a scheduled gathering of some kind early on, you know, after every election. Because I think it is true that you know, when you're running a campaign, you focus a lot on your own campaign, and you really don't pay a lot of attention to the other people who are running. And so it would, it's almost like an introductory meet and greet. And, and I don't, I don't think there should be a budget for it. Let me say that right off the bat. Uh, but if you know, if there was a way to uh, encourage something very low key and very casual, just as an opportunity, did you just what, what was suggested? Is hi, my name is. And I mean, I think back to the when we had the youth council here. We all ran around the table and said, my name is, and I ran because, and I want to do X. And it was great because you know they had no idea who we were. And, and I think it's probably very helpful for them. And so maybe just something that's fairly informal, and, and that could at least provide that opening piece. And after that, I think, you know, we, we're all adults. We're going to create the relationships we're going to create, and, and hopefully we're all here for the 
greater good, and, and we'll do what we need to do to achieve it. Uh, so uh, you know, I'd be in favor of including somewhere in here that introductory piece you know, within three months of the election, that there's some kind of a gathering, an informal gathering uh, for the council and uh, senior staff. I think that'd be useful. Um, and as far and the only question I had around this sort of evaluative piece, and, and maybe I'll, I'm attracted to Gail's suggestion for this reason, whenever I see a line that has evaluate, my next question is, by what measure? Whose standards are being used, and what, what means I've succeeded? It's easy if you're going to say, here's your three-year plan, and you, were, you had set out these 16 things, and you know, six months in, and 12 months in, and 18 months in, you go, yeah, check, and no, I'm still working on that one, and check, that's easy. But when you're talking about evaluating council's culture as part of an annual evaluation of effectiveness, that comes with huge subjective criteria. And my next question is, how do we pick those? So I'd love to see Gail's suggestion of what do, what do other cities do and what kind of criteria do they use? And maybe we then look and go, okay, that makes sense. Let's pick and choose these ones and make up our own. That, that I'd be interested to see. Lisa, can you bundle? Got it. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't know what we decided about 21, but anyways, here's what we'll propose, that we keep 27, um, that we separate one, direct staff to examine the evaluation, the council evaluation practices from other municipalities, and 30, or whatever number I've heard, as part of the council orientation, conduct a introductory meeting for council and senior staff. Yeah, that's great. Does that capture what, because I thought, Gail, you were saying that that would, you look at what other team building things that other councils are doing. Is that captured in what Lisa's saying? Because I don't think it is. Okay, how about other evaluation and team building yeah. processes yes, from other municipalities? Exactly. And those can be the new number of ones. And we just lose 21. Let's stop the conditions. Got that? Yeah, very good. And 21 just disappears. Okay, uh, we have one more section, then we can go for a uh, re-swipe break. Um, so stand up or can you, pardon? Two more sections. Go ahead, Councilor Isaac. just team building, that analogy, because politics is somewhat divisive and the reality is ca voters put nine distinct individuals and ideologues at the table, theoretically. Uh, maybe just another, I do prefer the language build positive relationships Perfect. that's yeah, in 29 yeah, that's rather than team building. So that's direct staff to examine the evaluation and relationship building processes from other municipalities. Yes, yeah. that would be perfect. Okay. All in favor? Those carried? Done. Council processes 30, 31. And then we have 32 and we have 33. Yeah. So there's two uh, other council processes as part of pol council's policies. Uh, written policies that outline council's processes for carrying out its work in such areas. Orientation and education, strategic planning, policy development, risk management oversight, statutory decision making, city manager evaluation, city manager succession planning, and council evaluation. And 31, conduct an annual council evaluation to assess councils effectiveness and opportunities <laughs> to improve. So don't want to beat that one to death, but uh, <laughs> certainly um, 30, I think, is about documentation of processes and policies. Well, I, I go back to the same thing I said at regarding 28. When you say evaluate the effectiveness, in order for me to support that, I need to know by what measures. I think so we kill it and leave it where it was. Okay. And what about so let's delete 31. 30 was done. Good. Everybody give it 30. Except the last piece, mm. council evaluation. Yeah. We should strike that if we're striking 31. Yep. Yeah. After succession planning. All those in favor? Thanks, Kerry. Thank you. 32. Develop a set of governance policies. Yeah, this would be an expansion on uh, what we have now, uh, and that connects, to, I think, to uh, item 30 there. So uh, spelling it out putting it into a, a single place so that everybody has the same reference point. All in favor of 32? Done. Thank you. Use the first hand up. And then uh, just expanding that uh, documentation out so that the public can understand how council works in a uh, uh, more straightforward way. Oh, this is where Shelley's made Yeah. Can, can I say something to that? The yeah, I think this is the place where in addition to this, which is, of course is great, maybe as part of that work, 
there's a piece there that speaks exactly about how it's made available, because not only is it on the website, which makes sense, but speaking to, you know, wherever there is an opportunity, uh, I think back to Peter Adams' presentation on tax rates, that uh, every opportunity is taken to present the governance uh, framework and the policy documents and the priorities for the next three years, uh, you know, to the public whenever, whenever, uh, whenever possible. Uh, that that capture, I think, that, that everyone agreed with uh, around making sure that this is commonly known, to make sure that people know as much as they want to. <laughs> I mean, some people won't, but as much as they can. That it isn't just on the website. That it's it is regularly you know, printed or distributed or sent to workshops or, you know, in all of us. I, I actually think all of us as liaisons to various communities have an obligation to, at every community yes. meeting, to say, I'd like five minutes on the agenda and let me just update yeah. you on the city's priorities. The last time I was here, you know, last month, that happened, and since that time, this has happened, if you got any questions. I mean, we are one of the cheapest tools the city has <laughs> in getting this message out. And so I think, to a certain extent, it's this is a huge part of our job, and it's incumbent on us to take every conceivable opportunity in our neighborhoods to go out and provide this information and answer questions. So that has to be captured there. So did we capture that with that? Okay, with those things, Dr. Christine? Awesome. All those in favor of that? Carrying. Folks, that gives us a five minute break. Fill your coffee cups, go to the bathroom. How will the second or third committee of the whole GP slash GPC be institutionalized? And when will that take effect? Would that be a change to the council bylaw? Yeah, or? It has to be yep. a council bylaw. Okay. So it's not like today we need a second. <laughs> yeah. Anybody wants to follow, follow this spirit? I was going to say it. Spirit. Okay. Uh, five minute break. Oops. Okay.